All right, guys, today we're going to look at how to factor quadratic trinomials again, except this time the leading coefficient is not going to be 1. Okay, so uh, be, we're not going to be able to just use simple pattern recognition here uh, because you're bringing other numbers into the actual multiplication. So the first thing I want you to think about is uh, what kind of polynomials would you multiply to create trinomials like the one above? Try to write maybe one or two specific examples of uh, a polynomial, two polynomials that you could multiply together to create one that looked like the one above. Pause and then come back. Okay, so hopefully what you thought of is uh, binomials. Okay, we're still multiplying two binomials, but uh, the leading coefficient of one or both of those binomials should not be one. So 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 1 would do it. Uh, and we don't need a 2 and a 3. We could use any two numbers there. One of them could be a 1, just as long as it's not both of them. Okay. Um, so the first thing I want you to do, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply these out. Okay, and I'm going to show my work in a very specific way, okay, um, and then I'll have you do it the same way in the second one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up like a double distributive property problem. Okay, so I'm going to write 3x times 4x plus 5 and 2 plus 2 times 4x plus 5. So I'm going to set it up like two distributive property problems, then I'm going to distribute And then I'm going to combine like terms. So you can probably already see why we're not going to be able to use simple pattern recognition here. Uh, th there's really not any kind of relationship between 10 and 23 uh, because the 12 is there. Okay, and, and, and the problem really comes into play where if you started with 12x squared plus 23x plus 10, you wouldn't know whether the 12 was broken down to a 3 and a 4, or a 6 and a 2, or even a 12 and a 1. Okay, and then what that was paired with specifically would change things a lot. Okay, but we're, we're going to have a couple different methods that we can use for these. So uh, multiply the second pair out the exact same way. And then what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to work our way backwards, okay? So hopefully you just paused and did that. If not, that's probably all right, too. Um, so I'm going to set it up the same way. And the reason I'm setting it up this way is not because you should be doing this every time you multiply two binomials. I'm sure a lot of you could do most of the work in your head. But because what we're basically going to try to do after this is we're going to try to work our way backwards, and we're going to try to figure out, okay, how do we uh, get to each of these individual steps? And I'm going to give you a hint. You actually know how to do most of these already. So we're going to start off with uh, the 12x squared plus 23x plus 10. And we're going to try to work our way backwards, okay? So I'm going to bring this problem down here. And then I'm just going to erase this, this one really quickly, okay? Um, and uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna try to do this one actually because I think we're gonna try to save a little bit of time. So let's pretend for a second that we started with 12x squared plus 23x plus 10. If we're trying to work our way backwards, the previous step is supposed to look like this: 12x squared plus 15x plus 8x plus 10. Now you got to be asking yourselves, well, how would we know? to go to this step. Well, one thing that you can see is that those two numbers add to 23, but the problem is how do you know, it, how would you know it was supposed to be 15 and 8 and not 16 and 7 or 20 and 3 or 22 and 1? How would you know? Okay, uh, That part we're going to figure out at the end, but let's just pretend for a second that you knew how to get 15 and 8. What I want you to do now is this. Pretend that I gave you this binomial, just those first two terms, 12x squared plus 15x, and I asked you to factor out the GCF. Go ahead and do that really quickly. Hopefully, you found that the GCF was 3x and that you were left with 4x plus 5. 
do the same thing for the second little binomial that's in here. And what you should find is the GCF is 2. Now I'm going to put a plus before that because I need some kind of sign in there because I don't, it's addition in here, so I've got to show that it's still addition. Uh, and then I'm going to write 4x plus 5. What you should notice now is that both of the parentheses are the same. So what you could do now is be like, oh, well, if I'm distributing two different things to 4x plus 5, I know that 3x and 2 must be the binomial that I'm multiplying by. Because that's what that means, right? We talked about this a lot. When you multiply two binomials, you take this term and distribute and this term and distribute. So if that's what it looks like in the previous step, well then this is what it must have looked like to begin with. So now the hard part is, how do we come up with the 15 and the 8? Because the problem is, if you, you can't just pick a random number, okay? You have to pick specifically 15 and 8. So here's how you're going to do that. I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. You're going to take the first coefficient, the leading coefficient, times the last coefficient. That's 120. Okay, and then you are going to look for numbers that multiply to that, multiply to 120, uh, and they still need to add to 23. That's what they, they need to add to 23 because otherwise you can't break up 23x into those two terms. So if you if you look really quickly, I mean you could try 12 and 10, uh, but those make 22, so that's not going to work. Uh, 120 doesn't divide by. Uh, 13 or 14, but it does divide by 15, and we get 15 and 8, and those do add to 23. So that's how we know to split things up into 15 and 8, okay? And that's, and this process, and I probably should have put this down here, this process is called splitting the middle term, okay? It's called factoring by splitting the middle term because we split that middle term up into two terms, and then we just factor out the GCF for both of them, okay? So a real quick summary of that process. Okay, uh, that process is basically just doing the following. You multiply the first and last coefficients. Then you find uh, two numbers that multiply to whatever that is from there and add to the middle coefficient. Okay, add to that x coefficient. Then you split the middle term up into two terms using those two numbers that you just found. Then you do the then you factor out a GCF twice. And then from there you just undo the distributive property. And that's all there is to it. Those are, those are your basic steps right there. Okay. Now, when we get to the back side, I'm going to actually show you two different ways of doing things here. Okay. I'm going to have you try one using splitting the middle term, and then I'm going to show you a different way that you could possibly do it. Okay. So, here's some practice problems. I want you to try uh, this first one by using splitting the middle term. See if you can follow that exact same process, and then I'm going to show you a different way that you could have done it. Okay, hopefully you paused your video and did that. If you didn't, pause your video and do it. Okay, I'm assuming you've done that. So 2 times 5 is 10. We're looking for numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 7. What do you know? It's 2 and 5. It was the same numbers we used in the problem. So that means we're going to split our 7x up into 2x and 5x. Everything else is going to stay the same. Okay, we're basically, again, we're trying to undo uh, the multiplication of two binomials. So we're turning it from three terms into the four terms that it was uh, right after we distributed both terms. Then we're going to undo this by doing some factoring by grouping. So 2x is my uh, GCF there. Okay, we're going to factor out GCF here. We're going to factor out a GCF of 5 here. And this is how you know you did it right, okay? Because if those parentheses are different, you can't really undo the distributive property from there. Okay, so we know that we must be multiplying 2x plus 5 times x plus 1. Now I'm going to show you a different way that you could have possibly done this problem. 
the method's either called brute force or guess and check. And basically, you just use common sense and mental math. Okay? So here's what I know. Uh, I know that I need to start with a 2x and an x as my first terms, right? The reason I know that is because 2x and x are the only two things you can multiply and get 2x squared. Again, we're assuming we're using whole numbers here. Uh, same thing with the 5. I know that I need a 1 and a 5, okay? And since everything is positive in there, I know I need plus signs in the middle. All you have to do now is figure out what order this stuff goes in, okay? So the first thing I'm going to try is 2x plus 1 and x plus 5. This could possibly be right, okay? All you need to do now is do kind of a mental check. You don't need to check the first terms. You just need to check the first and the last terms. You just need to check the ones that are going to make x's. So mentally, I multiply 2x and 5 and 1 and x and add those together. That gets me 11x. That's not right. So that means I need to switch up two of my numbers. I'm going to put the 5 here and the 1 here. And we know that this is right from what we just did. But again, if you check, 2x times 1 is 2x. And uh, 5 times x is 5x. Add those together and we get our 7x. And we know that the 2x squared and the 5 are there because that's why we chose those numbers. Okay? So what I want you to do is, using either brute force, okay, guess and check, uh, or split the middle term, try the remaining three on this page. Okay? Pause, do that, and then come back. Okay, I'm assuming you've done that by now. Uh, and I am going to just see if I can jump straight to the answers by using guess and check. Uh, guess and check was the only method I ever used uh, when I was your agent doing these same problems. So again, I know it's got to be 2x and x, and I know it's got to be 5 and 1. I think the 5 goes here and the 1 goes here, and I could check and see that that's right. 2x times 5 is 10x, plus 1x is 11x. That one worked great. Uh, this one is a little bit trickier. Okay, because I know I, I have a 3x and an x, and I know that I have a 1 and a 2, but I've also got this positive negative sign issue to worry about, okay? But I know I'm starting with 3x and x, and I've got to create a 5x in the middle. I'm going to try putting a 2 here and a 1 here. Um, and let's try putting the plus here and the minus here. Uh, if I do that, I get negative 6x and positive 1x. I get negative 5x. That was close. So that just means if I switch up my signs, there's a nice thing for you to remember. If I switch up my signs, I'll switch up the sign on just the middle term. So now I get 6x and negative 1x. That makes 5x. Uh, last one, I've got the same issue. Okay. This time I'm going to try 3x, and I'm going to try plus 2, and I'm going to try x minus 1. Let's see if that works. Uh, I get negative 3x, and I get positive 2x. So my middle term checks out, and again, I always know that my first one checks out. Uh, oops, I've got one more on there. I did not notice that until just now. Uh, so I suppose I should probably do this one, huh? Uh, this one's a really easy one. So I'm, I'm going to again have 3x, and I know that I've got a negative 11 in there. I kind of see that as a really big negative number considering I've only got a 3 and a 4. So I'm going to try negative 4 over here to make negative 12, and then a plus 1 over here. So uh, if we check that out, again, if I multiply it all through, I get 3x squared minus 12x plus 1x. That gets me my middle term, and then minus 4 at the end. Okay, I did all of those with guess and check, but again, if splitting the middle term works better for you, you can do that. I'd suggest knowing both because sometimes guess and check is faster, and sometimes splitting the middle term might be faster. Okay, uh, that's it for this lesson. I uh, hope this was helpful in getting you to factor these slightly harder quadratic trinomials.